All right, well, good morning, Michael. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Oregon Zoo Live. My name's Michael, and today we're going to be meeting our giraffes. Uh, so right now is a good time to start sending in your questions. Uh, we appreciate everyone watching today. And if you want to help support the zoo in other ways, if you can always go to OregonZoo.com slash donate, uh, and they can direct you to ways that can help support the zoo. Uh, so before we get started with the questions, though, I would like to introduce you to our two giraffes. Um, we do have two here at the zoo. The one right up here with me is Desi. He's our nine-year-old reticulated giraffe. Obviously, you can see he's a little bit of the braver of the two. Uh, and back behind him, kind of hiding around the corner there, is Buttercup. He's our five-year-old Maasai giraffe. Uh, so he's a little bit shyer. He may come visit during this, but he also may just stand back there and watch. So, um, so yeah, if you have any questions about these guys, uh, feel free to send them to us, and I'll try my best to answer them. All right. Well, our first one is Macy wants to know how tall are these giraffes? Well, Macy, uh, both our giraffes are right around 15 feet tall. Um, but surprisingly enough, uh, they are not yet full grown. So Butter's back there at five years of age, still isn't even uh, barely considered a full adult. So when he's done growing, he should actually be closer to about 17 to 18 feet tall. Sylvia's asking, how long are their necks? Uh, Sylvie, um, well their necks uh, for a full grown draft can be anywhere from about six to seven feet long. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty long neck. Um, Scarlett's asking, what are these horns on their head and what, what are they called and what are they used for? Oh, that's a good question, Scarlett. Um, so those aren't actually true horns. They're what we call ossicones. So they're actually just a bony extension of their skull. So they're just bone covered up in uh, skin and fur. So uh, males actually use them when they spar with each other. Uh, so males will actually fight with each other over females. So um, those come in handy for that. Peyton's asking, uh, are giraffes endangered? Uh, Peyton, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, currently right now, the whole of all giraffes, the entire species is not considered in danger, uh, but their population are in serious decline. So uh, we are expecting fairly soon for them, unfortunately, to be listed as endangered. Um, Gwendolyn's asking, how old is Desi? Uh, Desi is nine years old. Um, Dean wants to know about their tails. Can you tell us a little bit about this big long brush tail that they have and what's that, that that's used for? Yeah, Dean. Uh, so yeah, their tails actually are very functional for them. So you may not be able to tell on a giraffe because they are so tall. They do have the longest tail of any land mammal. Uh, but that long hair at the end of that tail actually comes out, uh, works as a very good fly swatter. Carrie's asking, why are their tongues blue? Oh, uh, Carrie, um, so these tongues right here, uh, they believe to be that dark color to actually help them prevent being sunburned out there when they have their tongue outside their mouths all day eating. So Thea's wa wanting to know why these two giraffes are, are two different colors. Thea, um, that's a very good question. So uh, these guys are different colors because they're actually different subspecies of giraffes. So there's nine different subspecies of giraffe. Uh, Desi's a reticulated giraffe, so they are, have this unique color pattern. And De uh, Butters back there is a Maasai giraffe, and they kind of have that darker color pattern. Andrew wants to know how fast giraffes can run. Andrew, well, they say giraffes can get up to about 35 miles per hour when they really get going. Um, Libby is asking why they have spots. Libby, uh, the belief why they, are, they have spots is that it provides a nice camouflage for them. So when you have a bunch of giraffes standing amongst trees eating, it's harder to single out a sing, uh, individual giraffe. They kind of blur in the background. Jack's asking about giraffe intelligence. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Uh, Jack, well, giraffes, uh, from my experience working with them, are quite smart. Uh, they kind of get a rep reputation for not being the brightest animals, but that's just because they're very cautious. So they take a little while to warm up to new people and new things, but we do a lot of training with our giraffes, so they do learn very well. Uh, we have a lot of behaviors that we do train them for to help us take care of them. So in my opinion, giraffes are quite smart. Maddie wants to know how long their tongues are. 
Uh, Maddie, well that tongue in a full grown giraffe can get about 20 inches long. These guys aren't quite that long yet, but eventually once they're full grown should get about that long. Um, Oliver's asking, what do giraffes eat? Well, Oliver, uh, giraffes in the wild eat primarily leaves. So um, that's what they need is trees and all the leaves. They eat all the leaves, they eat a lot of the branches, they'll eat the bark. Here at the zoo, we do provide them as many leaves as we can, but um, we also provide them uh, alfalfa hay and a high fiber pellet to kind of round out their diet. Um, Liam's asking about giraffe sleep. Can you talk a little bit about that? He wants to know if they lay down, if they stand up, and where they do it. Yeah, yeah Liam, so giraffes uh, are pretty unique with sleeping. Uh, they don't have to sleep a lot, so they estimate they only need about 30 minutes of sleep a day, and that won't even be at the same time, so they can break that up throughout the day. Um, but when they do sleep, uh, adults will mainly sleep standing up, but they do lay down to sleep. Uh, these two here have a pretty easy life here at the zoo. They don't have to worry about predators, so they like to lay down to sleep. But the ones in the wild tend to have to be a little bit more on the alert, so they'll usually sleep standing up. So I missed who asked about it before, but we did have a question about what are giraffes predators in the wild? Ah, so giraffe predators, their main predators in the wild are lions, so larger prey to lions. Um, will hunt uh, even adult giraffes, uh, but young giraffes have to worry about hyenas and leopards and uh, some of the other predators like that. But the main one would be lions. Emmy wants to know if these giraffes are male or female. Well, Emmy, uh, both our giraffes are males. Um, Jennifer's asking, how much does a full grown giraffe weigh? A full grown male giraffe can weigh anywhere from about 2,500 to 3,000 pounds. Addison is asking, why do their ears flap sometimes? Well, uh, Addison, sometimes uh, they are very communicative with their ears. Sometimes they move them around just because they hear a sound and they're turning them to them. Sometimes it could be flies. Um, then sometimes they just flap them if I'm not feeding them fast enough. <laughs> Lily's asking, how do giraffes drink? Well, Lily, uh, giraffes drink um, kind of similar to us. They just have a longer way to reach down. So uh, giraffes in the wild, uh, they do uh, drink from um, pools of water. Uh, so how they do that, they spread their front legs as wide as they can. That way they can get their face down to the water and they just take a big gulp before raising their head back up. But they do get a lot of the uh, moisture that, that they do drink is actually from the leaves they're eating out there and uh, it's actually licking off the condensation from the leaves. Genevieve is asking what sounds giraffes make? Well Genevieve, uh, giraffes are very quiet animals but they do uh, make a varying range of vocalizations. Um, a lot of them they believe are actually at a frequency we can't hear uh, but uh, some of the ones we do here at the zoo is uh, they'll make some grunting sounds um, usually when they're pushing each other away from food. Uh, young calves will make kind of a bleeding or mooing sound when their mom is far away. Um, and they also, the moms have a deeper kind of bellowing sound that they'll do to call over long distances to, if they're looking for their calves. But for the most part, these guys don't uh, make much sounds at all. AJ is asking, in the wild, how do they fend off predators or how do they avoid predation? Mm -hmm. Well, AJ, uh, the first thing they do is uh, being as tall as they are, they have very good eyesight. So their first defense is seeing the predators uh, coming up before they can get close enough to catch them. So uh, giraffes usually are in a herd, so everyone's kind of on the lookout. And when one giraffe responds, the rest take off running. Um, if they don't catch the predators soon enough to get away, then they do have a very strong kick. Uh, so their kick is strong enough actually to kill a lion. So uh, they'll just kick at them when they're trying to come up and jump on their back. Aiden and Jessica are asking how long giraffes can live. Uh, Aiden and Jessica, well giraffes uh, here at, in zoos uh, actually can live up into their early to mid 20s. Uh, unfortunately in the wild there's a lot more threats out there for them so their average age tends to be a lot lower in the wild, usually around 15. Lainey wants to know how much giraffes can eat in a day. Well Lainey, giraffes can eat a lot. Uh, they spend most of their day eating anywhere from 16 to 20 hours. So 
In the wild, they estimate they eat about 100 pounds of leaves in a single day. Uh, here at the zoo, since we have some other food items we do feed them, we estimate they eat probably right around 45 to 50 pounds of food a day. So Elliot's got an interesting question, can giraffes swim? Well, Elliot, I don't believe they are very good swimmers. They, uh, they avoid the, the water other than to reach down to drink in it, so they usually don't wade out into it. Uh, luckily, they are very tall, so they'd have to be very deep water before they need to worry about swimming. Um, Tatiana and Mercedes are asking about giraffe groups. What sort of uh, groupings do they live in in the wild? Well, Tatiana and Mercedes, um, so giraffes live in uh, what we kind of call loose, uh, loose herds. Uh, so females will live in uh, groups of herds anywhere from 20 to 100 individuals um, that may break apart in smaller ones and come together in larger ones. Uh, but they will, um, males will kind of move freely. The younger males will form juvenile herds, but the lone males actually kind of go on their own just looking for herds of females. Gabe's got a tough question. Boy. Gonna stump you. <laughs> How many spots? Oh, <laughs> yes, Gabe, that is a tough question. But I, I have never taken the time to actually count them. I'll admit that. But uh, once the zoo's back open, I'd appreciate if you want to come here anytime. You can count them for me and just let me know how many you come up with. So Hannah is asking, where do giraffes live? We know they live in Africa, but could, can you tell us the, the range, what parts of Africa they live? Yes, yeah, Hannah. So our two specific subspecies of giraffe, Reticulae and Maasai, they actually live, uh, Maasai live in um, uh, central Kenya down into Tanzania, and Reticulated live in northern Kenya up into Ethiopia and Somalia. Uh, giraffe habitats used to range all throughout sub-Saharan Africa, anywhere you had savanna woodland, so they had the open space and trees to live. Uh, but unfortunately, their ranges are quite smaller now. But they'll stretch all the way up there from Ethiopia down to South Africa. Quinn is asking if they have good eyesight. Yes, Quinn, uh, they actually have very good eyesight. So that's one of their big defenses is being able to see good long distances. I don't know the exact distance off the top of my head. I don't think that has been fully researched, but that is one of the main things they use out there to alert themselves to predators. Um, Emma and a couple of other folks that might have missed it before are asking about the ossicones, which look like horns. Can you tell us a little bit about those again and what they're used for? Yeah, Emma. So those ossicones are, are just an extension of their skull. So they're just bone covered in skin and fur. Uh, and the males use them when they're sparring with each other uh, uh, over females. So both Christy and Rosie are asking about how long you've been working with giraffes and how you came to do this work. Well, Chrissy and Rosie, um, I've been working for drafts for probably about 10 years now. Uh, so I grew up on a cattle ranch, so I worked with cows and horses my whole life. Um, and then went to college and got a degree with, in biology of the zoology emphasis and then started working at a zoo and eventually got a chance to work with drafts and been working with them ever since. Can you tell us a little bit of what it's like to, to work with giraffes specifically as opposed to other the species that you work with here? Yeah, uh, so working with giraffes uh, definitely is very rewarding. Um, you have to be very patient with them. Um, as I mentioned early on, they can be naturally a little nervous and shyer about new things and people, so you definitely have to be patient. Um, and then there's also just the obvious challenges from their size. Uh, they um, are very large animals, so you have to come up with ways to be able to treat them and take care of them uh, uh, where they have to do everything voluntarily for you. So it's a lot of time uh, training and just working with them and getting them comfortable with you. Um, we'll take one last question. It's from Maddie and Gavin, and it's, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the difference between the, the spots and patterns, but also other differences between the subspecies? Yeah, uh, Maddie and Gavin. So. Uh, this is probably a good shot now. So the main difference, uh, every subspecies has slight variation in their spots. So Maasai giraffes are known for having just the darker spots ranging anywhere from brown to black. Uh, the lines in between 
are also a little bit darker, almost a gray to brown. And their spots are what we call like an oak leaf or pattern. So they're broken up, not well defined. Um, and then Desi there, our reticulated drafts have the very well defined spots, the nice crisp lines. Uh, and all the other drafts have some slight variation on this. Uh, and it can be as simple as there's some drafts that have spots almost identical to Desi, their legs are just white. So the main difference in spots is, as far as we can tell, is just visual. Uh, so there's no underlying difference. Um, but yeah, some of the other differences between subspecies, uh, Maasai drafts tend to be larger or taller than a lot of the other subspecies. Um, some uh, specialize eating slightly different leaves and stuff in their ranges that they find. But other than that, most drafts between all the subspecies are pretty similar in what they need habitat wise and behavior. We had just one last one oh, yeah. actually, because they missed it before. Ramin and Kian want to know uh, about giraffes predators in the wild. Oh, hey, Ramin and Kian. So yeah, giraffes do have predators, even though they are very large animals. The main predator for giraffes are, are lions. So larger prides of lions will hunt uh, giraffes. They'll try to isolate individual ones to hunt. Uh, the young do have to worry about uh, leopards and hyenas and some of the smaller predators when they're less able to defend themselves. But lions are the main predators. But yeah, so I think that kind of wraps up our uh, Facebook Live today. I thank everyone for coming today. and. Um, Hope you take the time to check out that link below in this uh, for just some fun at home activities and feel free to share those uh, on the Facebook page in the comment section so we can see what you guys are working at at home. But other than that, just like to say thanks for watching and uh, everyone have a good day and bye. And if you guys want to say bye to the drafts. Thanks, Michael.